Just before 8 o'clock on Sunday the 7th of December 1941, the Japanese launched an all-out attack on Pearl Harbor. The attack was a complete success. By the end of the day, there were over 3,000 American casualties, six battleships had been destroyed or disabled, and over 300 American aircraft on the ground had been destroyed. The leader of the attack was a Japanese airman named Mitsu Fuchida. His call sign, Tora, 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 Tora means tiger, was the signal that they had achieved complete surprise. When Fuchida returned to Japan, he was hailed as a hero. This had been a tremendous display of Japanese air power. The imperial ambitions of expanding Japanese influence in the Pacific were now being realized. Of course, it had the effect of forcing the United States to declare war on Japan, and this would ultimately lead to the defeat of the Japanese imperial forces. Fuchida was fiercely patriotic, and he was dismayed and angered by the surrender of the Japanese forces in 1945. He was further angered by accusations made against the Japanese forces that they had committed war crimes. He took the view that all combatants at war had committed atrocities. And so he decided that he would interview returning Japanese prisoners of war who had been held by the Americans. And he was trying to collate uh, evidence to show that the Americans too had committed atrocities against the Japanese prisoners. What he discovered shook him. Almost to a man, every returning Japanese prisoner admitted that they'd been treated extremely well by the Americans. And one thing that seemed to recur in the stories that were told to Fuchida was the involvement of a young woman called Peggy Covell. This young woman had visited them, had brought food and presents, had cared for them. Someone said, just as though I were her brother. And also, that they discovered that Peggy Covell's parents had been beheaded by the Japanese during the war. They were missionaries in one of the Pacific Islands. The Japanese had invaded the island, they had been arrested and they had been beheaded. Fuchida, as he listened to these stories, was quite amazed and he said to them, did you never ask her why she was doing this? And they said, yes, we did. And very often the reply she would give would be, it was because of what her parents prayed before they were beheaded. And Fuchida just couldn't understand that somebody could act in such a way, having suffered personally at the hands of the Japanese. On the street one day, a man gave Fuchida a gospel leaflet. The leaflet was written by a man called Jacob de Chaser. Jacob de Chaser had been captured by the Japanese. He'd been tortured, he'd been treated in a terrible way, but he had become a Christian and he'd forgiven his captors and this little leaflet told about his experiences, about how he trusted the Lord Jesus, and how he forgave those who had abused him and tortured him. These two things made a deep impression on Fuchida, and he decided that he would have to buy a Bible and find out what it was that made these people act as they did. So he bought a New Testament, and he started to read the Gospels. And so he read through Matthew's Gospel, Mark's Gospel, and he came to Luke's Gospel. When he got to the end of Luke's Gospel, Luke describes the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus. Just before the Lord Jesus had been crucified, the Lord Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When he read that, Fuchida realized this was the prayer that Peggy Covell's parents had prayed just before they were executed. Father, forgive them. And at that moment, Fuchida said he realized that he was the one who needed forgiveness. He was the one who had sinned, who had done wrong. And as he read through the Gospels, he understood that the Lord Jesus had died on the cross as a substitute for his wrongdoing, for his sins, and that he had been raised from the dead, and that if he trusted him to be his saviour, then his sins would be forgiven. It was on the 14th of April 1950 when, in his own words, he asked for forgiveness. He trusted in the Lord Jesus, and he became a Christian. He said that on that day I seemed to meet Jesus for the first time and knew that he was forgiven. Well, Fuchida spent the rest of his life telling other people about the Lord Jesus and about the one who could forgive their sins. He traveled widely across the world, telling his story about his conversion, preaching the gospel, trying to share the good news with other people that despite our sins, that there was a savior who died for us and that we too could be forgiven if we trusted in him. He met Jacob de Chazer. He preached alongside evangelists like Billy Graham. He died in 1976, and right to the end, 
he was so thankful that he heard the message of forgiveness that he read about the Lord Jesus and that he trusted him for himself. I hope you found this interesting and that you will come to know forgiveness too through trusting Fuchida's Saviour for yourself.